Make a lovely dress, Henrietta. Well, that fabric runs a little steep, Selma. Sixty cents a yard. The price is no object. It'll look stunning on you, dear. Mother, I don't care too much for that striped effect. Mother knows what she's doing. It'll hide some of that baby fat. Sam, <laughs> I think I'll take three yards of this and um, two of this. Okay, I'll cut it for you. All right. Oh, I'll be right with you, Kate. Hi, Henrietta. Good morning, Selma. Oh, Mrs. Bradley. Mrs. Bradley, what happened to Kate? Oh, you do cling to the common touch, don't you? Very well, Kate. Oh, Sam, I meant to tell you I'll pay cash as usual. It'll help balance out for uh, some of your always charging customers. <laughs> Selma, I've been noticing your hat. Oh, oh, do you like it? The flowers are lovely. But you ought to get busy and clear out some of that crabgrass. <laughs> See, you didn't save that brilliant remark for the women's club on Wednesday. It would have opened the meeting with such a nice, dull flood. There you are, Selma. Oh, Thank you very much. Thank you. There you are, Feather. You have a fitting with Mademoiselle Louise in Pixley. <laughs> Bye, Kate. <laughs> Mademoiselle Louise. Before she moved from Crabwell Corner, she was just plain old Lizzie Blodgett. Well, Lizzie or Louise, she sure gets a fancy price for her dresses. As much as twelve dollars, I hear. Yeah, well, it's Selma's money. Uh, Sam, I... oh, how are your cantaloupes? Selma's sure making a big investment in Henrietta. High-priced yardage, expensive dressmakers, dolling her up at the beauty parlor. Mm -hmm. She's up to something. You got any idea what it is? Oh! You know what I think? I think Selma's getting Henrietta all fancied up to hook some fella. And six bunches of carrots. The kind of money she's spending, it ain't any local boy. Gotta be a city fella. You mean like Steve Elliott? Well, you finally got the hint. And a lug of tomatoes. <laughs> Kate, I, I thought your Billy Joe was sweet on Steve Elliott. That's right. Well, if it was just Henrietta, I wouldn't open my yap. But when Selma Plout starts spinning her web... Sam, I'm staying out of it. I wonder what's taking Kate so long. No! Mr. Carson! Uh-oh. That voice had a familiar rattle to it. <laughs> Mouth Incorporated. Get on the train, dear. Oh, Mr. Carlson, you are just the man I've been looking for. You're too late, Sam. I already bought my Girl Scout cookies. I just want to tell you that the people of the entire valley owe you a deep debt of gratitude. Ah, oh, it was nothing. Sooner or later, some other genius would have come up with the idea of putting decoy telephone poles between the real ones to confuse the woodpeckers. I didn't mean that. I'm talking about your brilliant business venture with Steve Elliott. Oh, that. When the Carson Elliott dynasty gets underway, LaGuardia Airport's going to look like a landing strip for sparrows. Oh, I hope I'm not too late to get it on the ground floor. Of course, I'm only a poor widow with a few thousand dollars. You're in. Of course, uh, my cash is all tied up in farmland. No. However, I could use your crop dusting service two or three times a week. You're in again. And I must admit, I carry a lot of influence with the other farmers, which should give your firm additional revenue. You're in with both feet. Oh! Selma, when you start drawing dividends, we not only will triple your investment, we'll quintuple it. Oh. But on hot days, you'll be fanning yourself with thousand-dollar bills. I can hold it. Oh, no, you dear man. Oh, oh Mr. Carson... Uh, tell Steve he has the best wishes of Selma Plout and her lovely eligible daughter, Henrietta, who not only is a good cook, but is the only girl in the valley with a cash drawer in her hope chest. Oh. 
There goes a fine woman. <laughs> what do you know about finance? Your pitiful little world's full of nothing but chasing cats and burying bones. <laughs> yes, sir. The Selma and her money behind us, our dynasty will take off like a rocket. Gene, will you stop that pounding and pay attention? This is the president of the Carson Elliott Company speaking. <laughs> Yeah, well, if this plane falls apart in the air, there won't be any company. Like I was saying about her daughter, Henrietta ain't the best looker in the world. And on the other hand, she ain't the worst looker either. But with a mother like Selma, it just ain't her fault. <laughs> Don't come to think of it, Steve. I can't think of a better wife for our business. With her at home waiting for you, you'll be just aching to put in longer hours. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I hate to say it. But that whole rudder control's got to come up. Will you pay attention? You don't think of Henrietta as a girl. Think of her as a runway, a hangar, a control tower. No. It's just got to come out. See, you, you can't expect her to come to you. She ain't the pushy type. You've got to go after her. Hey, Floyd, what's holding us up? Will you? Henrietta, will you please let me help you aboard? Just a little longer, Floyd. Maybe he'll... I mean, one more minute won't make that much difference, will it? Well, the heck it won't. We're due to pick up Clint Bleeker's squash at 11.06. He's got an awful temper, and if we're late... Did you ever try to scrape Hubbard's squash off a locomotive? Surely <laughs> one little minute. Floyd, come here. What do you want, Charlie? For crying out loud, Mr. Conductor, will you please help that girl aboard so we can get going? She don't want me to help her. Oh, so that's the way it is. Hey, Floyd! What do you want, Charlie? What time did Steve Elliott say he was coming back from the state capitol? I didn't know he went. <laughs> About midnight, didn't he say? <laughs> but at least, maybe even later, say one or two o'clock. <laughs> Well, isn't this train ever going to get moving? I've got important things to do today. Charles, you may only be an engineer, but you think like a conductor. <laughs> well, I'm glad one of you showed up. I thought I was going to have to fix lunch by myself. Why don't you tell me you were going out? I already set a place for you. I'm not going out. Then why the glamour? Oh, Mother, can't a girl look presentable? Well, yeah, presentable is all right, but uh, don't you think you're carrying things a little too far wearing your weekend eyelashes on Thursday afternoon? <laughs> Boy, will you stop ringing that bell? Well, if you can toot the train whistle, I can ring this bell. <laughs> Hello, Billy Joe. Hi, Kate. Hi. That was a good time, and we're just about to have lunch. Well, thank you, but we can't. We're running behind schedule. Yeah, we've had a lot of delays, and, uh... Hey, Billy Joe, how come you're wearing your weekend eyelashes on Thursday afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have on your mind, boys? Well, Sam Drucker got this here phone call, and we're supposed to find out... Didn't you tell Mr. Drucker the answer is still no? I'm not going out with anybody who calls. Yeah, we told him, but this time the call wasn't for you. Oh. It's for Steve. Oh, well, he'll be down in a minute. He's upstairs taking a bath. We ain't got time to wait. We got a railroad to run. Yeah, we're 27 minutes behind schedule. If you give me the message, I'll see that Steve gets it. Okay. That's funny. I had it a minute ago. That is funny because it was never wrote down. <laughs> Don't you remember when we come out of Sam Drucker store, you says to me, Charlie, Sam's give us a phone message to give to Steve. Oh, yeah, now I remember. I was standing there when the call come in from Selma. And she was talking so loud you could hear her clean over by the pickle barrel. <laughs> That's nice. That's real nice. But the message. The message. Selma. It is very important that you get this message straight. No. Sam. I will, Selma. Well, could you get to the part about what Selma said? <laughs> the message. Selma. Tell Steve there's no time to write a note because my beautiful daughter, Henrietta, has impulsively prepared Oysters Rockefeller for tonight's dinner. Since there is only the two of us, 
it would be a good opportunity for you to enjoy a good home-cooked meal for a change. RSVP. Well, that's Selma Plout of all That was very well said, Floyd. <laughs> Goodbye, boys. I got something. Signed, Selma Plout and her ravishing daughter, Henriette. <laughs> dirty and I've got a five pack of clothes you could do. Uh... No, it's got to be dirtier than that. This is a case for Uncle Joe. <laughs> I know Selma Plout has promised to back your airplane empire, but does that mean she has to steal my boyfriend for Henrietta? Billy Joe, uh, you're just too young to understand the executive thinking at the top level. And I don't care about it. I'm your niece. Well, you got a point there. Blood is thicker than water. Oh, Uncle Joe... On the other hand, gold is thicker than blood. <laughs> but tears is thicker than both of them. Don't you worry, honey. Uncle Joe will think of some plausible excuse why Steve can't be a Selma's for dinner. Uncle Joe, you're a doll. Oh, my. You just kissed a 180-pound rat. <laughs> What you got? Oh, what a pity you don't favor my side of the family. Mom, Steve's nice, but I don't know how he feels towards me. Always bringing up trivial objections. Picture this, dear. There you are on Steve's arm, marching out of the church under a triumphal arch of cross swords. <laughs> the least you can do for your mother is to give her a son-in-law who's head of his own airline. <laughs> Think of the stats, the prestige. Mr. Carson, come in. Hi, Henrietta. Hi, Selma. Oh. Where is Steve? Oh, uh, he couldn't come. There was an emergency. Oh, oh, what a shame. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Business? Uh, he had to fly the veterinary up to the state park. The top bear had an attack of appendicitis. <laughs> oh, don't worry, ma'am. With all that fur, the scar won't show. <laughs> I mean, Henrietta's lovely dinner. She slaved all day over a hot stove. Well, that's why I come. Don't you fret your little head, Henrietta. Just lead me to them oyster Rockefeller. <laughs> I guess the least I can do with my partner to need his share, too. While we're stuffing ourselves with oysters, Selma, I'll tell you how I've been building Steve up with your proposition. There she goes. Good old cannonball with its cargo of boredom. Chugging merrily from Hooterville to Pixley. Then the eventual trip back from Pixley to Hooterville. With perhaps an enthralling two-minute stop at Scalvo's Crossing. I tell you, it's a never-ending succession of throbbing, pulsating excitement. No, I don't believe it. Now, what is it? We're going to get the cat off the cat. One minute of time. You. There we were, sitting on the porch, and the cannonball. Oh, my gosh, I'm speechless. You tell her. And the cannonball stopped. And, and guess who got off? They're right out there, both of them, and they. Who, who, who's there? Sam. All that excitement because Selma has come to visit? Oh, hurry up, dear. <laughs> What kind of a hotel is this? Where do I register? You mean you want to register in my hotel? Uh, uh, we'll be staying here while my house is being painted. Oh, well, then it'll just be for a day or two. Well, uh, there's no telling. Uh, the painter says it may take from, oh, six to nine coats. <laughs> Say, what, did you want two singles or a double? Um, we'll take um, room number six. 
That's occupied. It's Steve's room. Oh, 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 oh it is? So well, then we'll take number five across the hall. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Girls, take your guest luggage up to number five. I'll get Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe is indisposed. He had a sudden attack of oysters Rockefeller. <laughs> this way, question. Just in case Steve should happen to ask me to go for a ride in his plane tonight, would you let me? Mom, was that Selma Plout that just went up the stairs? Yep. And Henrietta. Well, why are Bobby and Betty carrying their luggage? They wouldn't. I mean, you wouldn't let... Oh, you did. <laughs> Look, this is a hotel, and they're staying a few days while their house is being painted. Mom, Selma just had her house painted two months ago. I mean, why would they tell you a story like that and check in here? Why? Because Selma is a conniving, scheming, underhanded individual. She is also something very near and dear to my heart. What? A paying guest. <laughs> okay. Hey. Oh, Uncle Joe, you're just in time to help me polish the silver. I just solved her problem. Uncle Joe, the silver. Oh, the silver can wait. I just thought of a way to get rid of her. Get rid of who? Selma Plout. Why would you get rid of the financial backer of the Carson Elliott dynasty who's going to put them into orbit? Get your mother. You should know that blood is thicker than gold. You can go. What does that mean? She may have fooled you, but she didn't fool me. She's using my empire as a subterfuge. She's trying to get Steve for Henrietta. She can't. Uncle Joe, the silver. Hey, we've got to get Selma out of the hotel. And I figured out a way so we don't get sued. We simply throw a head full of bees through our transom. Oh, you're crazy. Look, you are staying out of it, and I am staying out of it. Uncle Joe, the silver. for flying. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were... Oh, gee. Oh, this is where you keep your plane. Oh, it is a beauty, isn't it, dear? I guess so. Oh, Steve, you're absolutely right. Oh, you're so right. It's not only a great night for flying, but it's a romantic night as well. Do you uh, fly, Mrs. Plump? In jets, of course. Oh, but I want Henrietta to experience the thrill of flying in an open plane with a first-rate pilot. <laughs> Wouldn't you just love that, dear? <laughs> oh, see, she's so thrilled she can hardly talk. <laughs> I get the plane, dear. You can't understand what's delaying Billy Joe. Oh, uh, uh, I, I, I don't think she'll show up. Uh, the poor dear compatible. <laughs> Mom. Gosh, I've been pounding on that door for 20 minutes. I no sooner found this flashlight for Steve when bang went the door. Who could have been so stupid? Not stupid, smart. That's Selma Plout. This time she's gone too far. From this minute on, I'm no longer staying on it. We never turn you down, Kate, but this time you're just asking sorry. But boy, Selma Plout isn't interested in Steve as a person. All she wants is a flyer in the family so she can brag and feel important. 
Well, we'd help you if Steve wasn't involved. Yeah, you're asking us to give aid and comfort to the enemy. <laughs> you call Steve Elliott the enemy? Well, he flies a plane, don't he? It's the age-old battle to the death between the noble iron horse and the vultures of the sky. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> now, what do you want us to do? <laughs> No, thank you. Uh, not that it isn't delicious. In fact, it really isn't bad at all, considering that you have so much to do that your mind probably was somewhere else. <laughs> Thanks, Summer. That's high praise coming from you, seeing as how you always say what you mean. Oh, I'll help clean up that eggplant. To balance it off, give me a couple more of them lamb chops. <laughs> James Steve had to miss this dinner. Oh, he'll be here in time for dessert. Such a charming young man. I guess Steve is the most eligible bachelor we've had around here in years. Oh, I'm certainly happy to be in a position to further his career. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Hi boys. You're just in time for pie and coffee. Where's Steve? He's coming. Come on, kid. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Make yourself comfortable. I'd like to have you all meet the new brakeman on the cannonball. He didn't do so bad for the first day. <laughs> gotta remember, Steve, when you finish waving your red flag at Stover's Crossing, you gotta roll it up, or Bud Larkin's bull will follow the train clean into Pitchley. <laughs> you are working on the cannonball? Best bosses I ever had. What about our company? Oh, flying is all right, but railroading, well... It's steady, less dangerous. And it makes me feel like part of the community. Hi, Selma. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Well, there's your train. It was nice having you. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome back, Selma, anytime you have your house painted again. Excuse me, Clyde. I'll take these. Never mind. Henrietta carried them in, and she can carry them up. <laughs> I'd have felt watching you march out of church under an arch of crossed oil cans. <laughs> you know, Kate, Steve turning his back on our dynasty may have surprised you. But I knew right from the start he was a flighty kind. Well, after all, he is a pilot. <laughs> hey, funny, Kate. Nobody laughed the day the Roman Empire collapsed. <laughs> so you mean that you believe that... You think that Steve actually... But no, it was all a knack to get Steve out of Selma Plow's claws. Hey, hey, my policy to hire relatives. But anytime you get tired of running the hotel, the Carson Elliott Company could use a good idea, man. <laughs> me invite you to spend your Saturday in Hooterville with Green Acres in Pinnacle Junction. And y'all can watch all morning for a slight surcharge. It's a good deal. Hooterville Saturday, tomorrow morning, starting at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on TV Land. Now, stay tuned for That Girl, next on Nick at Night's TV Land. Pinnacle Junction. 